so my name is Julie Bukobza. I'm an independent curator based in Paris and I'm also the head of the Luma Al residency program. Today I decided to invite my friend Martin Atebourg, who is an attorney at law, a collector. He's been the president of the Kunsthalle Basel since 2008. He's been now the president also of the Saint Moritz Film Festival. He's an active board member of the Lafayette Anticipation program and also of the Fonda Foundation Art and Design in exactly. Basel. Exactly. Is it good? All perfect. All perfect. Yes. So we decided to prepare this tour in four different galleries that we think will show like very various ways of like seeing art, thinking about art, different practices, people coming from abroad. We chose together. Yes, I mean we did the tour yesterday, we went, went to all the booths, but practically. And uh, first we prepared, we choose some names, which probably we'd like to see. Then we went to see all the names, the galleries, and then we choose these four galleries and artists we wanted to present to you today. And we, luckily some artists will be here also today, which we thought would be important also yes, to have their voices. Yeah. So follow us. Hello. Hello, Chris. So, you have a gallery in LA since uh, January 2021. Yeah, so almost two years old. Yeah. And we so, are, yesterday when we passed here, Julien and myself, we really liked the work of Isabelle uh, Nuno de Buen. De Buen. It's a bit of a complicated name, but you know, we learn. We try to learn it by heart. This is the <laughs> first time I saw her. Uh, I saw her work. And we liked it a lot, also because it's like it's different layers of work, and she does everything herself. You think it's stone, but then it's papier mache, and then all these different. Uh, it's like trompe l'oeil a little bit, which you said yesterday. Yes. Now, really. So yeah. it was interesting to see. Uh, also, it's kind of new. I think we really fought for a long time that it was found objects, and only at the end we understood that she actually makes every single bit of the works we can see. And with a, like an architectural take on it, uh, with a background, she's a Mexican artist living in Hanover. Young artist who's here. Hi. Hello, Isabel. Finally, nice Hi. so happy to meet Hello, you. Martin. Sorry, it's in front Hi. of the nice camera the first time we Hi. meet, but we will never forget. Okay. <laughs> so she's here. So we thought maybe we would ask you a question about two works. Yes. Or, so you yeah. can explain a bit how you work and you know what yeah. we already said is what we learned yesterday, but you can certainly explain much more. Okay. Martin, which work would you like to choose? To well, I think I would uh, probably the bigger one. Yes. So you have many okay. layers. No? Okay. How you work, maybe also even with the techniques and how you... Okay. Maybe I will start um, talking a bit about the materials yes. that, I, that I use. Um, I'd like to work with materials that are and that I can work with in a very direct way. Um, I use, in that, in that sense, very uh, simple materials like paper mache, ceramics, um, fabric, uh, paper, uh, yarn, and I like to have a very um, direct approach Sorry, uh, to the materials that I use, like with no Inter intermediary, only my hands and the material. So, but for you, when you start working, for example, you want that it looks like a shell, or yes. ah, okay. Mm. Well, I mean, the reference to the organic world mm -hmm. is an important part of my work. Um, of course, I'm not thinking I'm going to make a shell no, for sure, but when I'm when I'm doing, but I but I start and the the shapes develop. Uh, in that direction and of course I take um, a step away and I take a look and then it's always like a back and forth uh, with the work a dialogue with the work and the things that I'm making um, the color is very important also in, in the work um, it's a long process how long does it take for example a work like this to well, the work develops in different stages. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, there are many different elements that constitute the work. So 
the ceramics are made in one stage, the elements of paper mache in another stage, then all the fabric is hand uh, dyed, mm. colored, uh, the drawings. But for example, the drawings here, you do them yourself? Yes. On the, mm. You apply them directly on the fabric? Uh, this is paper with okay, this is yes. a ah, okay. charcoal on paper so I have developed a technique where I draw on transparent paper and then I glue another layer of transparent paper on top and on the back a very thin fabric like a muslin so this becomes like a hybrid between paper and fabric mm -hmm. no? it's like a very a material that I I like to to work with materials that I kind of develop for myself mm -hmm. no? Um, so the drawings, um, I like. I, I do the drawings, but I use them as a material. I'm not so interested in the drawing as a as an image, but much more as a material that I can integrate to sculpture. Mm -hmm. So the, this tension between drawing and sculpture is always present in my work. Now you can see that, for example, all of these um, paper mache elements, they are like a three-dimensional drawing, maybe like a three-dimensional map or a, or a piece of um, a house of architecture. Or, so, and then um, the drawing becomes uh, sculptural no, as well. And I don't know, like the, the lines, all the ceramics have like the, the the ceramic becomes also a surface for drawing, huh? so the drawing somehow grows uh, or like sprawls uh, from the ceramic into the paper into the other layer. No? To make a one work, yeah. Exactly. And as Chris said yesterday, it's really about like layers and layers and layers and yeah. layers. Yeah. So in, almost in an archaeological sense, right? Definitely, mm. yeah. I mean, for me, when I'm working on these pieces, I feel like an archaeologist myself. Mm. So I have to somehow... Also, when a piece is read, is, is done, I need to also somehow analyze them myself. No? So it's like kind of reflecting on the work and discovering it, discovering it again when I once it's done. No? But when you start, you already have the shape in your mind, or you? I mean, I have a I have a vague idea, and all of these elements, like all the elements, come from other stages of the work. Mm -hmm. So, the fragment is a, plays an important role in my process. So, of course, there are decisions, okay, I will make these cuts and integrate this in this way. But I really, I'm very interested in being in dialogue with the work. I don't want to impose my will on the work. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope to learn something new when I'm working. So it's... Um, That's where the organic also comes in, in a way. Yeah. yeah, and what you were saying about the layers, I mean... Of course, there are very, very layers visible, mm -hmm. but there are layers also maybe invisible. No? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, all of these drawings, they have other drawings inside, mm -hmm. or like here, right? Yes. So, for me, integrating these drawings have a, they have a, almost like a magical or like symbolical mm -hmm. um, energy, you no? Know? Yeah, because they look like talisman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, they have maybe something ritualistic, mm -hmm. or also in the way they are made, they are very carefully put together. Um, for me, it's very important that I have this micro and macro aspect in the work. That I, when you go near, you can um, find more and more levels mm -hmm. uh, in the work but also see it as a whole. But you grew up in Mexico? I grew up in Mexico and I studied in, in Germany. City I grew up in Mexico oh, City. Yeah. Yeah. So of course, yeah, so of course... So it has an influence like the... De definitely, huh? like the all, the, um, all the all the time um, or historic, historic yeah. times yes. that come mm. together in a city like Mexico course, City yeah. that, are, are, that are also visible in the materials that build the city. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's something that has always fascinated me. Yeah. And also, of course, the, um, the, what we know and what we don't know about the old cultures. 
that the occult and the kind of yeah and yeah. the mysterious yeah yeah the sacred and the, yeah yeah definitely those are all aspects that come in when you for example this work when you do a, like a chain it's more you it's like you think about jewels or I mean I don't I don't think about something concrete but I feel I, I think a lot about the the energy that goes into the work no like the the detail and of course they um, I feel like they they are put together in a very careful way and in that in that way maybe like jewels no? or ornaments most, yeah most of all the the, the small ones no like uh, the little but for me this these works are also like maybe like letters that I send into the future or, or that come from another time no? like this time aspect uh, plays an important role in my yes, work sure. yeah like, one can see that I think mm. no? like letters maybe like le messages or letters to myself from an in another time in the future mm -hmm. Back. Traces, yeah. I feel they are um, very, in a way, very, very emotional mm -hmm. works. Hmm? And are you already influenced already by your time in Germany, or not really? Or do you think is? I mean, one never knows really. But mm. I think in Germany, I I learned for myself that the formal language mm -hmm. has. Um, that maybe language can come after the formal language. No, the amazing thing about Isabel is that she's really creating her own formal language through these objects, through the materials, and then um, the. I mean, it's not that they're they're not conceptual or sophisticated, but the language, how they're spoken about, is really comes after, you know. Which is, is is almost a inversion of the typical process in Mexico, or these more conceptual based practices, or yeah, I I feel like for me it is important that, like I said before, that I am in a dialogue with the work, mm -hmm. and the work somehow guides me and tells me something I didn't know before. Mm -hmm. I don't want to to tell the work like. Uh, what it is supposed to say, yes. because that I find that boring. Yeah. No? For, no, for, sure. for me, it's important to be always uh, on the on, in a quest or like um, in a, um, yeah, like finding new things. Mm -hmm. no? Because otherwise, I could just write a sentence, and yeah. Yeah, and that sure. would be it. No? So I think it's about what you see, but also about what you don't see. Yes. Of course. No, no. <laughs> no, Thank no, I, you. I, yeah. you. No, when you look at the work, you discover many things which probably I discovered. I see other things than you do. Yeah. But that's that's mm. the beauty of art. Yeah. Also, I think. No? Yeah. But there's also a lot of this idea of mosaic that you really feel like almost that the work could be one or many. I don't know. There's something that feels like it's a huge, like it could be a Roman mosaic in different ways, like how it's kind of fragmented and how. Because there's the idea of layers, but also really of pieces together, and yeah, I mean, my my process is absolutely um, like additive, no? Mm, like this, yeah. uh, mm. I the, the the pieces come together through the addition of other uh, elements, no? But it is very important for me that each piece, each part of the work, is strong by itself, in itself. Um, yeah, and I mean, also, of course, you. I, I think there is something also open-ended about the work, or in the in, in these works, like they could keep on growing, or they could keep on sprawling, um, and and I feel like that for me, that's a a, a quality in sculpture. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you we love the Thank work. You Thank you. It work. was a very beautiful yeah. discovery. Thank you. Thank Thank you really. So much. I'm not saying just for the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Hello. So this is gallery that we chose. The second gallery we chose is Antenna Space. We're based in Shanghai. And we just discovered the work of Tsuke. 
and Peng that we loved with Martin for different mm -hmm. reasons. From Schengen, you live where uh, actually? I live in Amsterdam. Right ah, you now. live in Amsterdam. Yeah, based in Amsterdam, yeah. So it's the first time we meet him, a bit like uh, Isabel before. We're super lucky to have all these artists in the booth. So maybe, Martin, you want to say a bit why, what we you, liked? You were born in China? Born in China, yeah, 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 yeah. China. from China. Yeah. So I don't um, know if he, I mean, I watched, we watched the video yeah. with, yesterday. And if, I'm, if I understood correctly, it's more about the gay life in China, no? Part, I mean, partly in a way, kind of, you know, responding to Roland Barthes, you know, okay, writing right. on young male bodies, right? Mm -hmm. So the film, in a way, kind of depart from yeah. those passages. Well, we yeah. Who is Roland Barthes? <laughs> How could we have to tell you today? I don't know. If French, you French know. philosopher. Yeah. The French philosopher. It's a French philosopher who who was invited by the uh, Chinese government to visit China in 1973, uh -huh. where he wrote this diary. Uh -huh. And this is where kind of the film came from, in a way. Mm -hmm. But not uh, directly adapting his passages, but kind of responding to them and playing with um, the specific sentences that he had in, in the writing. In the video, there are really fragments of his text, yes. right? Yeah. yeah, there's one fragment that was taken from his writing. And, the, um, and I was done reading that, and the rest were all really fragmented conversation between me and my friends. Okay. Kind of responding to the question that Bart wrote about in, the t uh, in his writing, you know, namely question uh, relationship between class and desire, as well as the, this homoerotic foreign gaze that he was projecting onto his bodies. And a relationship to the city as well, right? To the architecture, the city. Yes. Yeah, yes, as yeah. bodies, as architecture and yeah. stuff, kind of, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yes. But has it also to do something with the political system in China or a, in the, with the freedom as a gay? Or? I guess, I mean, not necessarily directly responding to that, but I feel, you know, our works are always political in a way. Sure. And I, the context where he was visiting is certainly political. I'm trying to think of politics in different ways, right, with a work like this. I mean, namely, I wasn't, for instance, wasn't interested in launching a direct critique on this problematic gaze that Barthes was projecting, although I've, uh, but I'm trying to kind of stay with it and play with it in a way, right? Uh, in a way, kind of creating space and agency for other kind of voices to come in. Yeah. Well, that's how we understood it also, mm -hmm. I think, I yeah. mean, it comes over like this. We are, again with different layers also, yeah, with of kind course. of this aesthetic and the body in the city, the architecture, mm. gay, like sexuality, but different politics, it really enters. And also in the steels, yes. maybe we can see also if you want to talk about yeah, one of yeah. them. Or... I mean, the, the still, uh, this is uh, stills from a previous five channel video installation uh, yeah. work called Keep in Touch. Uh, this one is from the, this one, from this the, one is this from the film, oh. yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, in that work, it was, you know, five channel, it was all shot on Super 8. Mm -hmm. Also, we're kind of thinking through gestures, thinking through prompts of scenarios and interaction, um, question the complexity of care and solidarity. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think for this booth, I was, the, all these four prints have this kind of, you know, gesture that I feel that provokes different central memories for audiences. So I thought I will include them on, alongside the film. Mm -hmm. This work, your work, it made me really think because I read it recently of Ocean Vuong. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I enjoy Ocean Vuong's yeah. poetry a lot, yeah. And I think it's really related to the, I don't know if you read this book, uh, in, On Earth We're Briefly. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah beautiful and it's I think it's very interesting because it's a different take on it but it's very central very emotional it talks about like different very cultural I don't know you're almost the same generation I think no uh, yeah I was around perhaps a little more experience oh, yes. there, but but yeah not so different and I was thinking that actually it would make a very interesting conversation to have you both <laughs> no it's true that would be a huge honor <laughs> yeah I will make it work <laughs> He's such a great speaker. Yes. I really admire him. And he knows how to talk to different people. He knows how to give different people different things. He doesn't just give it out. You know, for the right audience to give the right thing, which I thought was master, masterful, yes. really. Yeah. It's yeah. a goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really <laughs> is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, we, shall we go shall inside? We go yeah. I know it's yeah. a bit difficult with the... No. No, but really it makes me think here. Yeah. I was telling Hans Rush about it yesterday. Yeah, I really enjoyed his writing. Yeah, Beautiful. Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so in the film, you, I was interested in, you know, using different slippages, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
kind of. So I was working with a friend of mine who portrayed this character of a local tourist rather than a foreign visitor. A local tourist. Yeah, a local, local tourist, tourist. Right. Yes. So navigating the city. And it's Shanghai. Uh, this is Changsha. Okay. This is yeah, where I'm from. Again, also a city that Bart did not visit in his trip. Yeah. And then also I'm you know filming in the present and not using archival material. So it's all these kind of slippages from the original trip in a text that I was interested in working through. Um, and uh, for instance, this is a passage of, uh, you know, kind of adapted from my own memory, like my own relationship with this specific hotel and the urban landscape and uh, urban environment in a way is also a very important character in the film. You know, we follow the protagonist going through these different spaces and architecture structures that bears imprints of the 90s in China, in a way, uh, which I'm personally very fascinated by. Um, also using these elements of musical interlude that also again a strong kind of reference to like 90s early Chinese speaking popular music genre. Uh, but uh, um, these are excerpts of like, yeah. Right, right. And you choose the music. I choose right. the music, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you I know. We didn't see that passage actually, no? We didn't see that excerpt. Mm. So, in a way, like the images, you know. It's a mixture of scripted theme that uh, at times respond to what Bart's visited. For instance, a school, and later on a cinema, or the riverbanks. But there's also themes that you know, I kind of just oh, capture on the street, or you know, these other queer spaces that are, of course, are unavailable to someone like Bart, but available to us who kind of know how to navigate it, enjoy it. Um, And parks as well, and uh, how long again is the video? Sorry, it's twelve minutes. Twelve minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, this kind of public sculpture in parks that are very nineties. They almost, you know, have this aesthetics of socialist realism, but adapted in a different way. You never portray yourself in your works, or? Uh, sometimes, in one of the prints outside, where two persons are cutting nails for each other, I was one of the performers. Mm. So I was in there. And in earlier works, uh, in some earlier films that I made, I, I, I was present. It all depends on the context and depends on who am I filming and what am I filming. Yeah, yeah. because it's so much about intimacy, right? It right. really talks about very specific, intimate. Right. And even though sometimes I'm not, you know, um, in front of the camera, but a lot of the experiences, of course, come from very personal experiences. So, so there's always me there in a different way. Yeah. Or the memories in the text are from me, or my voices. Actually, my voice is always present in like, always all the video voice. work. There's always yeah. some parts, either me reading or me talking to people. Uh, right. So it has to do also with the practice of a diary, almost, kind of, in yeah. different time and space. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there is an interest in the diaristic form, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, I'm also, in this case, the film works with a diary, right? Mm -hmm. The diary of Bart. So, so I think that forms of, you know, kind of fragmentary, mm -hmm. fluid form is something I'm very interested in. When you, when you go back to film in China, it's yeah. complicated for you, or it's This one was not so complicated. Oh. I mean, technically, it was it would, um, the complication lies in more the technological side where I have to, it's my first time working with 16 mm in my own film, so I had to learn it again, you know, made a lot of mistakes, <laughs> the lab made mistakes too when they were developing it, so, yeah. but I'm happily accepting most of the mistakes and a lot of them stayed in the film too, mm -hmm. like, in a way, you know, precision is not necessarily what I'm most interested in, but it's the texture and the materiality that I'm fascinated by. Do you think the, the fact that you live in Amsterdam is like has mm. an influence on how you feel it? Or? Not, not really, because I just moved to Amsterdam six okay. weeks ago. Ah. So yeah, so right, right. So this was complete, uh, completed yes. way before that. You had the race again? Yes, I just yes. started. Yeah, ah, nice. Right. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good place to be. Right. Yeah. Glad to be there at this time. Okay, perfect. Thank right. you so Thank you much. much. Thank you so much, Thank you. Thank you. We're so happy we met you. Yeah, yeah. likewise, likewise. We're lucky yeah. to have all the artists around. Yeah. And we want to see more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.
We let you know if we come to Amsterdam. Please do, please do. Is there a way to stay in touch, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot give my phone number in front of the camera. No, no, no. He's amazing. Yeah, he's amazing how he talks also. I mean, he's super smart, super... Very good English. Very good, very elaborate. like, for his age, I think he's quite young. Super young. He's amazing. Already here. So that's our third choice? Our third choice, yes. It's um, Gramma at, uh, Epsilon. Gramma, Gramma Epsilon. Roman uh, gallery based in Athens since few years. But uh, I mean, the owners are two Italians. It's two Italians. Who moved to Athens, if I understood correctly. Yeah. And uh, who are presenting mainly women, women artists. From um, the 70s? Yes. And this one is Mirella Bentivoglio. Most of the artists coming from like concrete poetry movement, feminist, 70s performance. Mirella was like curator, writer. And, and a poet. A yes. poet. She started as a poet. So probably you can explain a little bit about Mirella's work. For Artissima, we, we, we bring this project with monographic project about Mirella Bentivoglio. Uh, she was a poet, uh, an artist and a curator in the early 70s and uh, she curated uh, many women's only shows. And when did she die? She died in 2017. Okay, this yes. year is a yeah. hundred years since uh, she was born. Okay. Mm -hmm. And all her work uh, is about language and image, so verb visual experiments. Mm -hmm. And uh, our gallery focus uh, called Grandma Epsilon Gallery. We focus on women artists from that period and that kind of research. Here we wanted to show the old, a bit like the itinerary that Mirella Bentivoglio took during her long career, which went more than 50 years. So we have the most iconic uh, graphic works from the early 70s there. Greeds, uh, the, the heart of the obedient consumer. Here we have, and then she worked with the collage, with the photo collage, with the sculptures, uh, the, um, the book uh, with the egg. The egg is a symbol uh, which Mirella Bentivoglio loved uh, because it's the archetypal, uh, the feminine, uh, the maternity is symbolized, you know. And coming from the letter also, right? Also, the, yeah. the letter E. In Italian, it's not just a letter, but it's also is the letter that we, we use as, uh, as a conjunction, is end. So it's the letter that de defines the way we have relationship as the two individuals or as a society, the way we bond, let's say. So you can, then you have the, the, the one on top of the other, when, the, uh, when you put the accent, uh, one uh, no it goes yes different oh, what yeah. i thought what i what you explained us yesterday also this work about uh, the, Afro the african american uh, artists uh, a lot of her work uh, you know they're very re relevant today like they were yesterday this work is titled black flowers uh, she made a collage out of a newspaper uh, news of an uh, Afro-American uh, boy who was killed by a policeman in 1971 and she created, she shaped the collage uh, in, like a flower, a black flower and she wrote funeral of a black guy, uh, 200 uh, black people they follow the funeral of the a young uh, Donald Rick Dowell killed by a policeman, black uh, the clothes, black, uh, the horses, black, even the flowers. No, but it's interesting with the Black Life Matt Black Life Matters that exactly. this was already like the case in. I yes. mean, of course, we knew that it was the case already in '71 or in yeah. the '70s or even before. But it's interesting that she did a work already around this yes, like absolutely. subject, which is also kind of a revoluting against uh, you know what's happening. Exactly. And so I think that's very interesting. You know. Also aesthetically, it's interesting how yes. she did this black flower. Yes. Yeah, and the idea of the concept of a black flower itself, like how, yes. what, what it represents, exactly. and yeah, exactly. Trop exactly. beau. Yeah. No, it's it's. We were saying a bit like actually, 
you and I, but it felt a bit like when we saw, we rediscovered the work of Rosemary Castoro, you know, yes, it felt exactly. a bit like this kind of very big practice when I saw it first at Tadeus and then it was, there mm -hmm. was a show in Geneva at the... At um, uh, Mamco. Mamco. Yes. Like really seeing a body of work and especially being here in Torino mm -hmm. and in Italy of like this very important pioneers, like Italian artist. For example, I knew her work without knowing it was her because it was the cover of a feminist uh, show from the 70s, right? This, that you showed us on the book. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. seeing more of this work and how it unfolds and it's like performance, drawing, everything, it's everything encompassed. But it's also very consistent if you look at the works. I mean, you don't see, it goes very well together in a yes. way, no? Absolutely. I mean, also aesthetically, it's very, uh, you know, you, this is not a flower, but it's also a kind of a... It's, it's a book. A different uh, form of. Yes. This is called. Uh, um, it's a collage. Also, fi no? It's a collage yeah. called File Cabinet uh, City. Ah. So it's a critique of the way we live uh, today. We live like that we are data inside the file cabinet. So. Yeah, it's super simple and strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe you wanted to see the books also? Yes, the books. The books. Uh, the book object for Mirella Bentivoglio is, uh, like for many other artists of that period, it's a very important uh, uh, work. In this case, we have the, the book with the egg. The egg, again, is the symbol, of the archetypal of uh, feminine and the fertility. Uh, we find also. it on different works, no? Yes, yes, but the egg is everywhere. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a pattern. But so, yeah. the, the book also is what carries memories no? and, uh, and knowledge, so it's, it's, an, it's an important thing. So. And it's made out of uh, marble. Marble. marble, okay, and the egg as well? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And this is again... Uh, the this egg is, is called already, uh, La Surprise, La Surprise, The Surprise. It's a work that she made uh, uh, taking inspiration from uh, Beato Angelico's uh, frescoes. Mm -hmm. You have on one side uh, Jesus Christ with the egg, but also the egg without Jesus Christ. So it's a, it's a very um, religious work, I think, yes. in a way, also yes. spiritual to mm -hmm. say, no matter what you put as a symbol, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's this work also you said is very important work, because. Uh, Okay, this work is called uh, Polluted Egg. Uh, Mirella Bentivoglio took inspiration from uh, a work of uh, Piero Manzoni uh, from 1963, where the human imprint on, the, on, on a boiled egg was uh, the, the actual yeah. human imprint, where Mirella Bentivoglio, 10 years later, she's making a statement uh, that nowadays, in 1973, the, the human imprint is not the fingerprint, but is the fact that this egg is uh, calcified because it's the result of the extensive uh, farming. Farming, yeah. exactly. That's the word. Yeah, so again, it's like the black rose. It's extremely actual. Like, it yeah. couldn't be more on point actually, yes. then, in 222. Then, yes. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, 50 uh, years ago. So this is, I think, a very important work. History of a monument. Um, in this work, uh, uh, she deconstructed the, the monument as a symbol of patriarchal power. So you have uh, on the first page the monument is intact, uh, and then page after page uh, she fragments the monument, mm -hmm. creating new words. So you have, for example, on the third page, you have uh, the monument becomes like me, not you, me, non tu. And then it becomes more words like muto, dam, or nume, god, monument. Page after page, uh, this monument becomes so broken and, and fragmented deconstructed that on the last page, uh, it becomes an abstraction. A lot of inspiration is from the futurism, uh, yes, you know, movement, the, uh, from yeah. the futurism, which experiment a lot you know, about language. Yeah. And it's again working a lot with letters and languages mm -hmm. yeah. and the meaning of it. Yeah. And Mira Bettivoglio said we are all uh, sons of the futurism in a way of the other. So. Ah, beautiful. 
Bobo, thank you. Perfect. Thank you, thank thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's a very great discovery. Great. We're super happy. Great. Great. We great. just wish we met her. So, Martin, actually, this, you made me discover this gallery because I didn't know them, the program, and you know the gallery really well, right? Yes, I know the gallery quite well. I like The gallery is called P420, it's from Bologna. It has been founded by Alessandro and Fabrizio. And, um, How many years the gallery? Uh, 12 years. 12 years. And I discovered the gallery when I was at Freeze Masters with Adam Chimchik, the former director of Kunsthalle Basel. And he told me that I have to see Anna Lupas, uh, which had a solo exhibition at Freeze Masters, I don't know, eight years ago or yeah, exactly. six, I don't know. In 2017. Uh, uh, yes. Dana Lupas is from Romania, no? Yeah, exactly, from Cluj. From Cluj, so. And now and she's 80. Yeah. And Marty has been one of the first uh, collectors to buy this artist. And uh, she will have a, a very important exhibition in two years in the, at the Stadler Museum in Amsterdam. So. Yeah. But it was funny because I, was, I remember I went there also with, Nico, with Nicoletta, a friend of mine, and she, she, I bought a kind of a skirt, a shirt, which is hanging now in my fat. And she bought kind of a skirt, a dress, which she was wearing at one of the events she gave. <laughs> she was, I went with her to a, yes. to, a, to a dinner and she was wearing this dress of this artist. Wow. So it was quite amazing, I have to say. And then uh, uh, another artist I like a lot from the gallery is Irma Blanc, um, yes. which she is also not so young anymore. Yeah, she's 88 now and she lives in Milan. And uh, this is one of her last uh, works that she did uh, in 2018 uh, and uh, you know she, she had a stroke in 2017 but uh, she needed to work in any case so she started to use the left hand to do, to do this type of work. But she couldn't use the right hand anymore, no? At she the moment, use it so well. uh, yeah, she can't use anymore a right hand mm -hmm. but uh, she needs to work, she worked for about 50 years and uh, she started to do this type of work with the left hand and they are called uh, Gehen, that in German means to go. So, and... Uh, so, you know, the practice really related a bit like what we saw before. Yes, like language. she works with language. When I understood correctly, she arrived in Palermo because she got married to an uh, Italian Exactly, to a guy. Sicilian man. And she is German, she arrived there, she couldn't speak any Italian, she couldn't read any Italian, so she started copying the newspapers. Yes. In a way, no, and yes. working with the language exactly. and she, inventing her own language, which yeah. then she did works of art out of it. Exactly. So the problem of, problem of communication that she met in Sicily at that time uh, was the beginning uh, of her work about uh, language and about writing. So what we can't explain into words, you know, she started to, you know, to express herself uh, through, through her personal way of writing, you know. So all her work is about uh, uh, writing as uh, an existential uh, life sign, you know? And then what we saw as well is the work of Riccardo Baruzzi, no? This one? We that we met that yesterday. yesterday and we met, we met the artists. It was super interesting because he explained to us the whole process, which is very intricate and like many layers, how he kind of constructs there's an inside and outside of a painting and how much happens from behind i think you can say a bit maybe yeah exactly so ricardo is a painter and uh, he likes to to paint classical uh, subjects of uh, the painter so from uh, still life to nudes uh, to flowers but musicians. always musicians, musicians yeah. but always trying to overcoming uh, the classical painting uh, for example in this case uh, he, he doesn't use a classical canvas, but a very soft linen. And also he likes to paint not only on the canvas, but also on the stretcher. And also behind the stretcher. So he plays with all the, the elements of the painting. And the trompe l'oeil idea. Yes. And it was super interesting that he plays this part, for example, is really done with the tubes, right, of uh, paint. Directly. He directly tubes. applies. Yeah, he doesn't use uh, the brush, but no. directly the, the tubes on the, on the canvas. Exactly. And then we also like Filippo De Pisis, who yeah. is not alive anymore, no? Yeah, exactly. We did a show mm. at the beginning of the year uh, on Filippo De Pisis, that is a, a modern Italian painter, more known for the, his paintings of the 20s, near uh, the Chirico or Morandi. But uh, we love uh, his way of painting, 
because uh, it's extremely contemporary. So, for example, here we exhibit uh, a news of a, of a boy. Uh, it's made in the 30s, no? In the 38, 38. yes. Okay. And uh, we see how, also with, together mm -hmm. with Ricardo Barusti, there's a dialogue of about course. painting, you know? And how Filippo de Pisis was uh, so before, you know, in the way of painting, uh, uh, which is done, you know, really with uh, very few traces of colors, and uh, most is about, is about imagination, you know, in the work. But it's also a bit like that he had probably, he had an affair with this guy, but he cannot remember everything anymore. Yes. So that Alessandro told me this yesterday a little bit, or you, I don't know. Yes. So he probably, he remembers very well the muscles, but the face he's not sure anymore. So exactly. it's a bit more faded. So most of the portraits of uh, boys uh, are done uh, or only with pencil or with very fast uh, color traces, because it was like uh, a memory of uh, a meeting. Uh, so. It, done in a very precise moment, you know? So most of them are works on paper and uh, were meeting, meetings. And this type of works were since uh, recently hidden, you know? Yeah, that's what you yes, said yes. yesterday, that yes. because they were like very yeah. openly yeah. Almost, uh, gay, they couldn't in Italy... Show yeah. this type of works. Yes. And, uh, but this is the right time to show these works. And yeah. uh, both for the subjects, but also for the way he did, mm -hmm. you know? Because they are very contemporary, very fresh. Without time, this speaks about you know every period of time. You know, for me they really remind me of Cocteau. Also, there's a something Cocteau, very, yes. very yeah. much. But this is different. It's more, more yeah, refined. Yeah, this, is, this is important. Like the way he painted, uh, yes. you know, <clears throat> not only the subject but also the way he paints. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the last and maybe we can, yes. Because actually, I just realized today that I saw the work at Paris International and I didn't make the connection. Exactly. There was a huge work there, right? Exactly. So, so it's interesting because we are also here in the booth going through different generations of artists, like from yeah. one passed away, very old, a young one, and this one as well, which yeah. is pretty young, right? Yeah, exactly. And Philippe so. passed away as well. So yes. It's interesting to, you know, also. Yeah, we, we really like to mix generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, of Italian uh, artists and not only, but exactly. have, who have connections with Italy, right? Exactly. Yeah. And Shafak Shia, she is uh, quite young, she's 32. Uh, she's born in, uh, in Shanghai, but she moved in Italy to study. And so she studied in Bologna, in the Academy of Fine Art, and uh, we discovered her from the Academy. Yeah. So we're very lucky because she lives in Bologna now. And uh, all her work uh, uh, speaks about freedom, freedom uh, in love, and uh, people love uh, absolutely her work because probably today we need uh, this type of feeling uh, of freedom and also about the joy of life. And the technique is uh, watercolor on a sandal paper. Nice watercolor. Watercolor yes. on sandal paper that she buys from China and then mounted on canvas. And then how does she proceed? She first she makes a drawing and then she applies the color, or she you know, or she, she does may, a, she a drawing a, first, or something. She makes a very uh, fast drawing, uh -huh. but the main uh, work uh, is done directly with the color. I don't know why it also made me think of I was telling you of Anne Henry uh, Darger. Yes. In a uh -huh. weird way of a Vivian girl because maybe the colors and stuff and the small like characters. It plays with some kind of like yeah, old mythology or so. And it's also this incredible fantasy. A lot. I mean, you yes. know, the, the, this girl on the bed with the pig. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. And this is She's a mirror. on the handstand. This is a mirror, so yes. this is the yeah. image. Uh, yes, oh, of course. see through the mirror. Yeah. Yes, in exactly. Yeah, right. Uh, no, Maybe he, hidden <laughs> scenes and things and clues. Yeah. Very oh, surreal. surreal. And then the, the two ladies, they look very real, but they are so small they cannot be real. So. <laughs> No, she, she likes it's to play really with, the, with the sizes of the, of the persons, of the animals. And uh, it's, it's interesting, the mixing of uh, cultures, you know. Mm -hmm. You feel the, a, mixing, a mixing of cultures and also the fact that she can't exhibit this type of work in her country. So this is really important, you know. So she, she, she prefers to be free and to, to be an artist in Italy, you know. And it's interesting compared to Filippo also how in different times they're still... Exactly, yeah. speak about uh, freedom. freedom. You know? Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Parfait, perfetto. Thank you very much. Grazie mille. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye -bye.